Okay, this is my uh, my last video on healthcare um, in general, and uh, this is going to be how I think the healthcare system, specifically in the United States and even in the uh, in the world, um, should should be fixed. Okay, um, in my last two videos, I talked about socialized systems, why they don't work, and then my last specific one, I was targeting criticisms to criticisms of of the uh, Canadian system and the English system, but but here's how I think we could we should fix it, and this is just going to try to be a quick video. Um, as I stated in my second video, there was had to be something that was keeping the supply of doctors down. Okay, and other people have already alluded to this, and I'll just tell you what it is now. There exist special interests, like like special interests exist in anything, in order to um to keep the level of doctors down. And the organization I was alluding to, and other people will tell you about, is the American Medical Association. The American Medical Association is essentially a union for doctors in America. And they try to create high regulations for students to enter medical school and to get certified as doctors in order to um, keep the level of doctors low. And what does this do? Well, it makes doctors more valuable, so their incomes go up. So obviously, they um, obviously they have a great incentive to uh, to do this. Okay, to um, keep the level of doctors low. So th this is a reason why I think they're not the only organization, but they're certainly the most prevalent one doing this. So this is, I think, why healthcare sucks in America. And this is why I think the public option is ridiculous, because we simply want to give people insurance, but not increase the level of people that they need to go to get the services from. How the fuck does that work? I, I told a friend that it was like um, people trying to get on a ship like the Titanic when there isn't enough room, and the government saying, well, we'll take over the system and we'll make sure people can get on the ship. If there aren't enough rooms on the Titanic to fit all the people, the government or anyone else trying to intervene and fix the system and just jam people onto the ship are, are not going to fix it. You can't just invent the healthcare out of thin air. There have to be people providing it, just like there have to be rooms on the Titanic in, in order to, to house people. So how would I fix this problem? Number one, I would relax standards for letting doctors in the medical school and um, try my damnedest to defeat the power of the AMA. I don't know exactly how that would work, but I'd say, number one, whatever we do, we have to try to increase the level of healthcare practitioners. And the one area that you actually do see this um, today, that, that um, the AMA continues to scream about, are these, um, these like little medical clinics that are opening up in Walmarts and Walgreens and places like that, where you can go if you have something like an ear infection or a sore throat or something, and they have two-year and four-year nurses that are basically charging you 40 or 50 bucks for basic services where if you went to a general practitioner it would cost you probably two hundred fifty three hundred dollars if you don't have health insurance and the AMA is pissed because they're saying these people are too dangerous and they're not certified doctors uh, and, and you're risking your lives well they're they're pissed because they're undercutting the price of the doctors the AMA is trying to protect um, and this gives me a little bit hope that we could not be moving towards more free market reform in healthcare because as these clinics open up they can at least compete with the doctors at some scale and, and maybe um, help lower the price of healthcare that way, even without insurance reform. So that does show a little bit that that free market systems are are working um, against the AMA um, to to you know get rid of them. But anyway, the first thing that we would have to do is to increase the supply of doctors. But um, the basic thing that we could do um, in regards to the current healthcare crisis in America, if you wanted something that would not fix the broken system we have, but at least make it better, I would do three things. Number one, end employer-based insurance. Give people the tax credit to buy whatever insurance plan they want. It, like Linking uh, health insurance to a job is like the, stu the policy in our public education system of linking um, a child to a school based on where they live. No one likes going to the public school that's close to their house if it's bad, just like no one likes, um, you know, likes the idea of leaving their job if they lose their health insurance. It yokes people to these, to these um, important things that, that they would like to take with them, obviously, and it's just a bad system to do that. So number one, end employer-based insurance, which, of course, Obama doesn't want to do, and even John McCain supported. Number two, let people buy insurance over state lines. How the fuck that's, that's going to hurt people is beyond me, and how you could argue against that is ridiculous. Um, and um, number three, I would try maybe to institute some tort reform. I'm not convinced that's going to fix it. Um, but I would I would at least consider it. Those are the three things you could do to try to reform the current system we have. If you wanted to try to make healthcare better overall and in the long run, um, the one thing that I would do, um, besides increasing the level of doctors, is trying to convince people to get on health savings accounts. If you know what a health savings account is, um, you're a very smart person because not many people know what it is. And I'd say the only only company that is in the news that does health savings accounts, of course, is uh, John Mackey and Whole Foods. And John Mackey owns Whole Foods, which is a uh, grocery store based in Texas, and he's being protested a lot because they say he's against insurance, which is the exact opposite. John Mackey is a libertarian who just understands 
um, there's a better way to do healthcare. And basically, a health savings account means two things: um, you can deduct money from your insure from your uh, taxes to go into like a health savings fund, where that money is there for you to use whatever you want on basic um, health needs. And if you don't use it, it rolls over the next year. Number two, you attach that health savings account to a high deductible plan. So you still have insurance. The difference is, though, is that you have to pay a certain amount of money um, before that health insurance will pick up everything. And it can be a, a little bit high. It can be, I think, three to $4,000 in a year before they'll pick up anything. But the point is, is that when the insurance company isn't being nickeled and dimed for, say, going to the doctor for the flu or going for the physical, if you know the stuff that you probably should be paying out of your own pocket, they're not going to drop you when you have cancer. They're not going to drop you when you need heart surgery. They're not going to drop you for breaking both your legs. Okay, they're going to cover the big stuff. And isn't that the point of insurance? I mean, wasn't insurance to cover catastrophic things? I mean, another problem of the HMO system is that we have this kind of mindset that if you pay a $100 premium a month, everything should be covered. And I'd say, you know, think about when your car gets dinged in the in the parking lot. When you get a little ding, you don't run to your insurance company and say, yeah, fix this, because you know that they're going to try to jam your rates up. In healthcare, you shouldn't be running to the do to the health insurance co health insurance company saying, you know, I have the flu, pay for this, when the point of the health insurance company should be to cover the, the big shit, the shit that can bankrupt you. And that's the, the big, you know, debate today is how do we stop this bankruption type um, service from happening where people will pay for heart surgery and they have to sell their house to pay for it. Well, you do this. Everyone can deduct money from their income tax into these health savings accounts. And I think the the major, the most you can put into it every year is 2900 for an individual and 5600 for a family. And then once you run up the limit for um, how much you have to pay out of your own pocket, the high deductible insurance kicks in. They cover the really big shit. And the point is, is number one, you have more control of your money. You can shop around for a doctor, ask them prices, um, work out a payment plan with your doctor, and do these things that you used to be able to do before the HMO Act of 1973. And basically make your money work for you and not have the kind of buffet-style um, grocery insurance that John Stossel joked about or how insurance works in a single payer system, that you have control of your money, uh, not an HMO person, not a government official, just you. And then the high deductible insurance there will cover you because they're not being, they're not paying for the small stuff, and so they're going to have no incentive to drop you, um, you know, for when you come to them, maybe in the one time, one time in your life when you have cancer or need a quadruple bypass or whatever. So this is how I would fix healthcare. Like I said, there are basic things you can do to make the system better, but if you want to overhaul the entire system. Um, in the long run and help it, I would do the health savings account. But of course, you know, to just talk about America, this week of November 2nd, we're going to supposedly get a vote on the Senate bill for health care. Um, odds are this thing's going to pass. I don't think the public option is going to fail. I don't think we're going to get the Kucinich Amendment for single-payer systems. But I think I think this public op option will definitely pass, and that's really too bad because I guarantee you what's going to happen years, you know, 15 years from now, with Obama's successor, whoever that is, they're going to use some argument for saying the public option has either failed in the sense that it's not it's not making money, or he could even argue the public option has worked too well. And there are so many people on the public option, it makes no sense to not institute single-payer health care. And one of these things is going to happen if we get the public option. I'd say within 15 years we'll have single-payer, which is too bad because, you know, my criticism of single-payer in my last couple of videos, it's you know, it's a ridiculous system. It doesn't work. It, it it steals. It encourages people from stealing from each other, this legal plunder idea. And so it's if we get that, it's going to be a joke. But anyway, this is my my videos on, uh, on health care in general, on um, problems with HMOs, problems with socialized systems, and how I think we should fix it. So, yeah, that's uh, that's the free markets for you.